right. Let's see. Do we have sound? Yep. Looks like it. Welcome to the Red Hands. This is Jeremy, and today we're going to do some basing of the uh, Cult of the Burning Man. So weird uh, miniatures, games, the other side. And uh, if you haven't seen the unboxing of this, please take a look at our YouTube channel, the uh, Idle Red Hands YouTube, and take a look at all the miniatures that were in here. And I'm going to just be cleaning them up and basing them, so kind of looking at them one at a time. And uh, I'm not going to do anything too fancy as far as doing anything on the base. I'm just going to set everything up and uh, kind of maybe some texture paint or something very minimal, but not today. This will just be kind of putting everything together. So I guess we'll start with the Allegiance box. So this is just the basic set. Let me show you. This is just the basic, um, uh, what you get in the sets. You've got a commander and then the warped and then the stocking portals. And uh, the really nice thing that, let me see if I can show you on one of these. Really nice thing that uh, Weird does is on the cards, on the data cards, try not to get the glare here, uh, the data cards for all the miniatures, they give you, uh, after they, they tell you the unit type, they'll give you the base size that it's on. And that's really helpful. I wish some other game companies would do that and kind of standardize things because uh, that becomes a little bit challenging, uh, you know, when base sizes change or, you know, because uh, if you have a, an older army or older miniatures that are either on square bases or a different size base and they've changed it with the newer releases that's yeah that's a real pain rebasing so it's really nice that from the very start uh, weird always tells you for Malifaux or um, now the other side what size base this unit goes on that helps a lot and it also makes them easier to distinguish on the uh, uh, on the battlefield and a lot of times especially with the skirmish games Measuring and, and uh, being able to move through a line of sight is so important. So to know, you know, the, the exact size of that base and to be able to measure the cylinder of a wall of flame or, uh, you know, a, a tree that's sp uh, sprouted from the ground, that helps a lot. So, so yeah, so I guess we'll just take a look at these guys first. And we'll start with the stocking portals. They're in here. So these guys, and yeah, let me to the side here oh sorry about that camera shake so we'll start with the three stocking portals and actually i've got two of each yeah there's three uh, sorry about this I sort of had these closer. <laughs> Sorry about that. So there's three of each. And I think one of these heads I had to attach in the box itself. It was, um, it had come off. So I just did some super glue. Oh, and to uh, kind of show you what's going on here. So here's our, our portal, portals. So today I'm just basically going to be using uh, the miniatures, the bases, some of the lot type 406. This is a thin but very fast uh, acting uh, super glue and it's good for for basing things because they they adhere right away because it's not like you want to usually do too much adjustment and then just my old faithful dull uh exacto knife i think this is a ulfa uh knife and uh yeah the blade is nice and dull so just clean up some of those mold lines and some flash and anything we see and if we get an opportunity so not so much with these, but anything holding a spear or a staff, sometimes there's, there's warping. And as you can see, I'm trying to show you here, this is a uh, softer plastic. It, you can probably tell it's a little shiny. You can see the gloss on it. So this is a different material than they were using before the more rigid plastic on their sprue uh, base kits where you cut all the, the pieces off. These come pre-assembled. So um, there's no assembly required but there is some so you can see this was put together two pieces here's the the seam underneath but it looks like for the most part this is pretty well hidden yeah everything is kind of behind and but as you can tell um it's a wonderfully detailed multi-part model that they pre-assemble but look at where you're going to have to get into <laughs> to paint that so this if you want to do really gorgeous detail on this uh, swirling portal it's going to be a little rough because you've got these tendrils in the way. So you're going to have some pretty big trouble trying to get a brush back there. So we'll see. We'll see how, how this goes. That's you know the big advantage of, um, of assembling from a sprue is that you can pre-paint and then assemble 
things that you know you're going to have trouble getting behind. But we'll see if we can get simple enough and maybe just rely on on some you know dry brushing and washes to give us a, enough of a texture on that swirling magic. Um, we may be okay, but yeah, it's going to be tricky. All right, so we've got three different sculpts. Yeah, three different sculpts uh, and two of each. So we've got six portals. And I guess, yeah, maybe it'll be fun. I'll just grab the cards if I've got them handy here. I'll grab the cards as I'm pulling things out so we can take a look at some of the game, some of the game functions. So sorry, this will just take a second. Breachlings. And I'm not sure. I've got everything out. Oh, I think I do. Looks like I will. So I won't have all of the powers, but I'll just show you the basic cards. And um, like usual, I think I'll stick. Oh, there's the stocking portal. I think I'm going to stick with the. Um, I really always like the uh, the weird the artist that weird gets for um, doing their uh, character art, and so I'll probably stick pretty close to the. The, the color examples that they do. Okay, so here's the card. So here's the uh, stocking portals. So you can see very, you know, very light and uh, ooh, very purple. But yeah, let me try to keep that glare off of there. But uh, so these are sentient portals. So they're fire teams. They go on 120 mil bases. And there's two squads. So two squads of three. So the bases are here. Yeah, so these are going to go on the biggest bases. So here we go. So these are the uh, inset bases. So when you put a fire team together, so you've got the 120 bases. And here's another one already put together. So you've got the bases, and they sit in the larger, the larger base itself. Wow. So I just need a couple more of those larger bases. Ah, sorry about this sound. I didn't prepare any of this. Everything is still in a big bag. But I thought they wouldn't be too hard to find. Oh, this must sound amazing. <laughs> Here we go. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> Digging in a bag for bases. OK. So they basically have 30, 40. And uh, let me double check the book. I think they give you a good reference. A good reference that I can show you for base sizes. I was just looking at it. And uh, yeah, here we go. So the single models. Single model fire teams will come on 30, 40, or 50. Are you seeing this? Yes, yes, yes. 30, 40, or 50. And then there's the 120. But then there's uh, 120 bases that, I'm sorry, those are 50. So the insets are 50. So these are 120 bases with a, uh, a 350 mil insets. So that's what we're going to be setting these guys up on. So they go on, yeah, as you can see, 3 times 50. 50 mil and the 50 mils times three sit in these 120 bases. But somebody like this insane monster, the Titan, the Gorish, from uh, they go on a 120 base all by themselves. Look at that. That is going to be a challenge. I think I'm going to have to pin pin through the bottom because this thing weighs a ton. <laughs> and it also, as you can see, is gapping. Uh, the assembly is gapping pretty good, so there's going to have to putty a lot of this to get this to have some smoother transitions. If you can see that, but uh, yeah, there's um, there's lots of fun to be had with that. So, so stocking portals, uh, three of them on 50 mil bases and two squads, which set into the 120s. So these are where they're going to go, and it's nice. So on each base, you can have the the three different sculpts. So the bases will look 
similar to each other, but there'll be no duplications on the, the larger base, which is nice. So first, let's take a quick look. Let's see if I can get the microphone here. Let's take a quick look at the models and see if there's anything we're going to need to clean up. These actually look pretty good. There's a little bit, a little bit here. And this is the first time I've actually taken a knife to this plastic, so I was very curious, you know, how this is going to work. Seems pretty soft, and it's, it's not marking up too strong. See, yeah, and here I'll probably have to fill that in a little bit. It's a pretty big line. Um, I won't do that now. I'll just I'm gonna put everything on bases. And here, again, we've also got a, a pretty obvious seam that could probably use some, some filling in and smoothing. But as far as mold lines, it looks pretty good. And it might just be because they, they, the mold lines, they caught them on some really nice edges here. There's not anything too terrible that I want to deal with right now. It looks pretty good. I, I can't believe they pre-assembled these. These are great. So we're just going to have one, one of each sculpt on base. Look at that lovely face coming through the portal. So, so um, Cult of the Burning Man is, uh, I guess, based on a, a lot of mobility, a, a mobility mechanic because you've got these portals that your um, your command can uh, cast from, and also you can summon and, and cause uh, kind of disruption. There's a little bit of a mold line there, a little bit of disruption. So the uh, commander is a very backfield commander for this army, but you, you have a lot of flexibility with movement and I'm sure then a lot of uh, scoring a lot of points by being able to get across the border or take up control more of the board with all of these little portals so that'll probably be different from a lot of the other either shooty armies or melee armies or like the gibbering horde just the horde army it's in the name where they're just going to be throwing that stuff at you and uh, with reinforcements I mean it'll just be like endless waves so you're not going to be able to wipe someone off the board you're going to actually have to uh outscore them which is which is the nice thing with uh Malifo is the it's not just kill everything on the board there's objectives and, and, and hidden objectives and uh you're just trying to score points without making it too obvious to the other to your opponent uh what you're actually doing so hopefully they'll have similar mechanics here we haven't played yet and that's why <laughs> that's why i'm basing everything because we're trying to get ready to uh actually play so i want to get these on bases and get them uh primed at least and start to do some basic color so that as soon as uh nick has some free time we will have some uh we'll get a chance to play but yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised. I saw, yeah, here, too. I'm going to have to go definitely go back with some putty and kind of fill in. Yeah, this one in the uh, kind of swirling portal part didn't come across as uh, as cleanly. There's more of a seam there. Ooh. Oh, and there's a oh, look at that little swirling tendril. Oh, geez. Look at that. Yeah, I'm really curious how these are going to prime. They're probably going to be more similar to... Um, like the um, Simon uh, board game minis. They use a, a little softer, uh, shinier, kind of slicker plastic. You're probably going to have to uh, be a little bit more careful about uh, priming them because they, you have to make sure that you're not going to crack anything you put on them. So probably getting a, a primer with some good adhesive instead of just picking a color something that's actually intended to be a primer that's going to have a gooder, better grab on the surface will probably give you better results because I could see if you primed with just regular spray and there was any flexing, you could probably actually crack or split the plastic itself. Although I haven't, haven't tried it yet, so with some trial and error, I will get back to you about what actually works. Yeah, this one is not, there's a lot more, a lot more that needs cleaned up with these guys. So this sculpt, yeah, and this was the one that was missing the head, so. But really, great, dynamic, 
position and yeah really nice yeah see you can see under here under here the sculpt the, the whole swirl is going to need to be cleaned up but that can still be done when it's on the base because i'm going to have to be filling and patching these guys as well wow and i think there's enough there's going to be enough let's take a look at just straight overhead there's going to be enough surface area in contact that it should be pretty easy to adhere. Okay, so I'm just going to apply some of this. This is a very thin cement. So apply this to the base. Try to get as much surface area as possible. And then just kind of overhead center it as best as I can. Just trying to give myself some room on all sides to get some texture on there. <laughs> I can't see overhead very well. Okay, so something like that. And then the same with this guy. Just apply decently all over the base because I really need these guys to stick. And I need to check too, especially the releasing agent. So they, after their, um, yeah, that's probably going to work okay. Release an agent that's on the models uh, if they need to be cleaned up. I'm sure that would probably help, especially for the adhesion of the primer, is to uh, give them a quick wash, which the, the base and the uh, super glue will survive easily. So we can do that after the fact before we prime everything. So probably before I fill, yeah, I will get everything cleaned up. And this guy's a little tricky because he's got his tail. I'll try to keep that a little bit the tail of that swirl. Wow, so these portals, they count as portal markers for the purposes of friendly actions and abilities and triggers. And uh, wow, I can make targets discard reinforcement markers, place them into base contact with any fire team in this unit, and the portals themselves. Uh, bum, bum. let's see, what do they have? Yeah, discard, wow, oh, it's, it's duplicated on the side, that's weird. Okay, and they've got Cascading Despair. If the target's fire team unit is in glory, that unit is immediately flipped from glory. Wow, so it yeah, kind of the inspired mode or kind of the, yeah, if, if any units uh, have that buff of being in glory, I can take them out by cascading some despair from these portals. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, this looks like a mess with you kind of team, so this should be fun. Ah, so this doesn't, of course it's the biggest one, and it has the smallest amount of uh, material on the bottom here. Try to get him. Oh yeah, and he's got a big tail hanging off too, so I'm going to try to get as much of that on the base as possible without making it too lopsided. Yeah, that should work. All right. Yeah, so except for this guy, it looks like um, these are going to be a minimal cleanup, just a little bit of filling. But yeah, this guy's going to take some work to make sure you can't see that line after he's painted. Oh, and there's the seam. You can see right here the seam for the head. And it lined up pretty well. This may have been the one I re-glued but I definitely have to fill because when he was in the box, his head was hanging off his little tendril mouth thing. All right, so these are just going to sit in this base like this. Yeah, and I don't think I have to worry too much about the hangover because there's a lot of room in between. So there's one fire team of stocking portals on their bases. Let's take a look at these next guys and see... Yeah, a little, oh yeah, this one's, wow, I didn't notice that on this. This one's a little tighter put together, but you can see there's actually a seam in that mouth. So it's not as tightly. Yeah, so here, actually, while I've got the glue out, maybe I'll just sneak a little glue in here and try to seal that in. Yeah, the top of this was uh, off a little bit. 
but the um yeah and i've had decent luck when i put the head back on the other one and also there was a head on the the titan that was off that seemed to hold really well i didn't try any of the uh, plastic glue so i'm not sure if plastic glue actually works on this more flexible stuff but i figured just be safe and go with the stronger glue wow look at that hand detail that's great 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 detail on that and great pose you know really uh they look like portals and it looks like all kinds of horrible things are coming out of these portals really good stuff yeah always the the translation of the um of the artwork to the to 3d with uh, weird miniatures is always great you'd never get disappointed i've seen some some kickstarters where obviously they just went to some they don't have their own artists they just went to some shop uh you know kind of some service bureau basically that'll you know give you 3d models from your artwork and uh yeah they're just real plain real barely functional looking stuff but both the 2d and 3d artists that um, weird uses are really wonderful a lot of personality and a lot of uh really creative stuff all right well there's some filling that he's going to need but we're not doing that today and yeah he's lined up a little bit better you can still see you can still see the line of that seam through the swirl but this is lined up a little better there's less there'll be less to do as far as getting that filled in and a little smoother but not bad oh yeah there's some there's that same mold line but really tiny not much at all yeah i think as far as the casting is good it's the assembly you know where some look at that look at in there that's crazy <laughs> getting a brush in there is going to be punishing very punishing all right there we go yeah i think that's as good as i'm going to get with him for now and yeah i'm just yeah the face on that that's great detail yeah it's really going to be fun to pick out these details and kind of give them some nice contrast you know just like in the uh, they're very very nurgly actually like a purple a purple uh ugliness that that's, that was the thing that attracted me to this uh army was the uh kind of chaos look because the uh, the cultists in this army are being deformed by their exposure to the, this this magical power this source is um corrupting them you know similar to like 40k chaos or, or you know warhammer fantasy and uh i like that look because it, it made for some really great models take these guys out okay there's nothing yeah i mean that's that's really great there's not a lot to argue about with these uh mold lines yeah it's just the assembly that makes it hard yeah and i'm sure doing it too so we'll just put these on the base i'm sure doing it two different ways like actually having some of these on sprues for people that are more you know perfectionist and want to uh assemble and paint you know pre-paint and assemble their own models i'm sure that would add to the cost the production cost to an ugly extent so they kind of have to decide to go one way or another and i think especially for people new to the hobby because i've heard that this is a simpler a bit simpler system and maybe reflecting what they're going to do with the malifo 3.0 but a little bit of a simpler system so they're looking for new players and i think it's it's always good for a, um, a system to be aware of accessibility and you know being able to uh, get players new players into the game and not having it be so daunting and so expensive you know not having the price of the starting box or a because this is their uh, larger scale game so you do need more units right off the bat so they're going to have to order or they're going to have to uh whoa a little much on the glue there um let me actually oh dab that off so I don't have to paint over it so a little tissue and pull that extra off of there okay and yeah he's not 
centered great, but well enough. And I'll give them a little bit of a differentiation. Okay, so these guys are now on. Yeah, that's a lot of material making contact. So that's great. Mm, yeah, I guess with this head, he's okay. All right, so here are the stalking portals. So they count as portals, and yeah, they even walk. That's why they're stalking, I suppose, because they're walking. Okay, so here's our, I'll just keep these just in-camera one. Still working, so here's our two fire teams of stalking portals. So that's these guys based. And who do we have next? I guess we'll go with the warped. So it would be these guys. So the warped have arcane shield, plus one armor, twisted claws, piercing and frightening. So they can cause frightening and uh, add shaken tokens. Echoes of existence. You can place the fire team in base contact with another fire team so I guess mobility and echoes uh, yeah echoes of existence so through the cracks uh, place it into base contact and out of nowhere take an attack action against a target if it is in range wow lots of fun triggers on that okay so the warped and the warped as you can see are three on 30 uh, 30 mil so the next size down maybe bit sized down from that uh three on on 30 mil bases yeah 30 mils are the tiny the smallest so that would be these guys this is the larger base and i think there's quite a few quite a few of these fellows there are yeah 18 total <laughs> so six of these six of these There we go. So there's 18 of the warped. And I guess I should be pulling out. So let's stack these guys up out of the way. And then get all our tiny bases out. And look at that, they even marked, they've got a nice logo on the backside of all of the bases, even the larger ones, I don't know about these, but yeah, even there, little one up top, but the, uh, I believe even the big bases, oh, little one in the middle, yeah, but they, they marked all their bases, and it's nice, the, the big ones, they all have a lip, and I think, you know, this, that was part of my decision to do kind of minimal for the uh, uh, base texturing and everything, because I, I want them to reliably, they, they seat so nicely, in these fire team bases that I wanted to make sure that I didn't thicken the base or do anything that was going to cause them to uh, to not fit as well. So just do something very minimal on the top and maybe give a color in color to the, the lip, but that's about it. But uh, yeah, they're easy to work with. Okay, so 6, 9, 12, almost. And we have a few different sculpts. I think there's actually nine different sculpts. Yeah, nine different sculpts for 18. That's great. So big variation. So no two fire teams have to look the same. One more. That's nice that they did that. All right. So 18. And... So that's going to be sorry. Let's sort through these. There we go. So it's gonna be these guys. So four Okay. Wow. 
it's going to be these little guys. So I'll just start on the top row here. Again, when I was unboxing, I didn't really pull anything out, so you couldn't really see details. And actually, now that I have these in there on their bases, I could probably do some nice 360s, 360 videos, so you can kind of see everything. Wow. Yeah, these have got some great deformity, some great uh, infection going on. Yeah, so these are just citizens with too much exposure, you know, cultists that, uh, you know, just became too exposed to the magic and it affected them. So as you can see on the uh, the card itself, yeah, just people that are dressed dressed like the turn of the century, people they are, maybe even residents of Malifaux, and uh, have been deformed and demented. Okay, so that'll give us 11, I think. Oh, sorry, I'm not better organized here with the... Uh... So let's just take a look and see if there's anything we need to do. So, and again, you know, Malifaux has a... Uh, a more less heroic, more you know, normal scale. So you see how thin arms and legs are. These are more human scale. Uh, you know, twenty-five millimeter figures. So you don't have the giant heads or tiny heads and giant shoulders and giant fists like you do in some other games. They're more human proportion. Yeah, little bit. Yeah, not not bad at all. I mean, really, really clean. And I can imagine, like, look at how, you know, sharp some of these uh, little tendrils are on him. Oh, is that? Yeah, maybe there. Does it, is his head a separate piece? Uh, no, no, that was just the light. Yeah, there's not anything horrible as far as mold lines on these guys. That's That's impressive. Wow. So... We'll just start attaching. So I'll just start with him. And just make sure I get enough to get him to be able to uh, hold to the base. Some of them do look pretty delicate, you know. Like, take a look at this guy. Look at the. I'm not sure <laughs> if I'm going to be able to get enough glue to get those chicken feet on a base, but we'll see. Wow, that's a crazy hag character in chains. Yeah, not a lot to clean up on these. That's great. And I guess these are the smaller ones are probably just a couple of pieces, as opposed to the yawning portals obviously had multiple, multiple pieces. So maybe that hand using the edge of there was a separate piece. But really nice. Okay, let's see. So she's got her toes. Oof. Yeah, so maybe just only here. So only here and here. I don't know if that's going to be enough to actually make contact. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let me see pose-wise. Is she? Oh, no, she's running. Yeah, it's like literally one point of contact, I think, on this base. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to go a little crazier then with the glue. If she's only going to be there. Is that... Oh, yeah. Oh, you're kidding me. Well, we'll see if I can get that to stick. But, um, yeah, quite a pose. It, yeah, it does look like her uh, her weight is on that fo <laughs> forward foot. Uh, yes, I'm glad I'm doing this live to stream... Oh my. Yeah, this might actually I need to maybe pin up through her leg to make sure. Yeah, because boink, I can see her coming right off. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's a great scary pose. Oh, actually, is she bent a little bit? Yeah, because this is the identical sculpt and it's not uh, yeah. 
I guess it, yeah, no, I guess it is. I'm just bending it a little extra to make contact. So I may need to uh, rethink how she's going to be based. Because there's not a lot of material. So I might need to, you know, build something up, you know, around her to get her foot, you know, to get more contact area. So some uh, textured acrylic or something and uh, seat her foot in there a little bit more and then have glue it directly to that because that'll stick well to the base. But OK. Yeah, balance wise, I, I don't think this is going to make sense. Yeah, she. I think she needs the two points. There's just no way to do it without. So, uh, yeah, I definitely like the, the chaos feel of these guys. And it seems like the, the play, the very, you know, tricky mobile, high mobility play of this faction will be fun. Yeah, I doubt, yeah, her, she's going to need to at least rest on that other foot. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And this is why I like the fast, the fast glue, <laughs> because otherwise I would be holding this for, what, 10 minutes, waiting for some, there we go, waiting for something to adhere. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. I definitely want something on that other foot to take hold as well. All right. Wow. Yeah, I'm really happy with these smaller guys. There's very little. Maybe here? I don't even know. Yeah, maybe his head. It's a little bit of a seam line. And actually, my magnifier on my lamp is connected to the camera, so I can't move it down. But, yeah, I can tag that later if it does look like a bigger problem. Wow. Yeah, really, whoa, really satisfying detail on the, uh, on these guys. And a little a little warpage, a little variation. Like when you have two sculpts, you can kind of see a little variation in uh, in the direction of the legs and things, but not terrible. Yeah, I don't see anything here that's miserable. So let's try. He's got little. Wrapped up feet. Hmm. All right, let's save the chicken for the end here. Wow, and here's a. Oh, yeah, she's got the tiniest. Well, I got, I got the flat of her tail. She's got the tiniest sort of pointed feet. So I guess I'll do here, 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 and maybe a little in her hand. Hopefully that'll do it. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, I want to find some, some kind of matching, like thematically matching texture that I can use on these guys. to kind of tie them together, you know, visually. And it may be something like the uh, kind of swirling magic, ah, magic look of, um, of like the portals, you know, find a, uh, a kind of strange gl purple glow or something to kind of dry brush, especially like the edges of the uh, bases. That might look really nice. My uh, casters in the, I forget what they're called, the, legal the only legal magic casters in the guild i did kind of a, a 
object-oriented light source or object light source for um, for their casting the kind of purplish glow, and that looks really cool. So maybe I'll try something like that with the base, give some little rough area, and then just kind of brush it with a purpley glow. Because I think a lot of these guys would actually look interesting with some uh, glow effects. Okay, here's another chicken foot. Let's see if we can get this to work. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, but really wonderfully, yeah, demonic, but kind of, you know, zombie affected, deformed uh, cultist. It's great. The warped. All right, so she's going to take a few more seconds yeah that's nice that glue <clears throat> is always nice so I can I'll start getting some of these guys out of the way some of the earlier yeah so there's a fire team of three on a base that looks nice can do a lot of nice variety, so happy about that. So everything isn't looking too samey, especially when it's on other parts of the board. That's going to be great. I haven't done him yet, but he's kind of the two-headed fellow stalking forward here. All right of him yeah not too bad I guess his shoulder there's a seam here not a mold line but a seam and his shoulder might need filled or polished down I got great little spikes everywhere and the nice thing about it being the softer plastic unlike the uh, death guard is you're not actually drawing blood I've actually picked up some of my uh, death guard models and put some of those little Spikes and horns are right into my, <laughs> to my finger because they're they're pretty hard, rigid plastic, and I've also broken some off. Yeah, nice. Okay. And then the remaining. So here's a couple of new sculpts. Yeah, with the top hat, it's pretty heavy. That gut's got a lot of plastic in it. Wow, I can't believe they pre-assembled these because they're definitely some pretty significant multi-part kits. Yeah. Wow, that's got to have been a lot of work. All right, wow, there's another deformed tag. Look at her hair over her face. Oh, that's going to be so fun <laughs> to paint. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, and again, you can see some assembly, but definitely no casting problems. This guy is going to be easy to glue because he's almost rooted to the ground there. Look at his uh, big flat feet. Actually, maybe smooth that out a little bit. Yeah, the plastic is not too bad to work with. All right. We'll do both of him. There's double, two hands per arm. Wow. Nice pose, very bent over. Oh, this is going to be fun. Hopefully he's balanced enough to not make it too hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's pretty balanced. Uh, 
Wow. Lots of units. Yeah, once I uh, once I have all these on bases, this is going to seem a lot more imposing than it did in the box. I guess we'll do the other double-handed guy. Put him over a little bit more this time. Mm, I love how quick that glue grabs. Oh, she's a little top heavy because of that skirt and she's got thin little wrapped up feet. Wow, these are really, really great poses, really. Yeah, oh yeah, they didn't quite hit. It, I thought maybe that was an apron, but no, that's a uh, just a, a line from assembly. So, let's see. I hope that's enough contact on the base. I do a lot of the Malifaux ones that I have have, you know, like high heel, if they're high heel boots or something, it's very little material that you're actually connecting to the base, but they seem to hang in there. Okay, especially with this, this glue is, is pretty, pretty sweet. It does a decent job. Yeah, because she, she's got her toe, she's got one foot up and then uh, her toe, so that should give us enough to work with. Okay, went a little crazy with this one. This one. Take some of that off. All right. All right. And just three more. And these, I <laughs> saved the tiniest ones for the end. So it looks like we've got. Yeah, she's just not really touching the ground, so these are you know, the hooves are the two points of contact. But again, great sculpts, really nice sculpts. I guess I can put her, use her hand for balance. And this lovely lady with the... Uh, tail. Kind of a centipede looking tail. And our little cedar looking girl. Yeah, maybe up a little bit. So her knife's not hanging off. There we go. So these are the warped. Yeah, really nice variety. It'll be fun to paint them. That kind of ugly, dead greenish. That's the thing I like about the Citadel Nuln Oil is it's a kind of greenish black. So it uh, it gives you a nice sickly, sickly cruddy look. Hmm, yeah. Nice, a nice variety. Of poses that's great they give you so many sculpts <laughs> actually I, I did the exact same <laughs> I could have done a bigger variety but I did the exact same three here let's swap these guys out wow Yeah, everyone seems to be holding well. Oh. So once I come up with a way to base these, I think it'll be fun to do another stream with that. Okay, so there is the warped. All right, so who's left in the box here? I guess only Adiodados and look.
Adiodatus has, this is him, so kind of the, the command unit of this allegiance box. Oh, wow, the mini has much more of a face, has much more of a, of a wrapped face. The uh, illustration itself just looks like a hood with a glow coming from it, but his face is much more visible because it, it did start out as a human. But as you can see, we've got some pretty pretty big warping going on. So as a little extra bonus here, so I've got a little electric kettle down here next to me. So we're going to have to wait a few seconds to let that get heated up. And I'm going to heat this up and see if we can get things to straighten out a little bit. Because you can see, I probably want this Oof, this is, might be tricky, yeah, to get this to be coming off of his back a little bit more, not so snake-like. It's quite a, uh, quite a bendy little thing at this point. Yeah, because it's, it needs to be like that, I would say, instead of kind of hugging his back. So, oof, and there's a pretty bad seam back there. Yeah, he's not... I love the art of his. Yeah, I almost want to cuff, cut that face out and just make it a cavity that I can then paint that light coming out of. Yeah, it's a little bit more of his face than I thought there should be. Oh, you kidding me? Look at that. They couldn't have just put some something down there? Yeah, so he's only going to be touching the base here and here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I definitely have to say he's not... Yeah, I thought he would definitely be my favorite, but his head is not... doesn't look like that. I wish it was more... less human and more mysterious, more possessed. And that's my uh, problem with the uh, Stormcast Eternals on in uh, Age of Sigmar. The lore of them seems kind of busted and strange, and especially when it first came out, they didn't quite know what to do with them, so it seemed like they were enchanted armor. But now they've got units with their helmets off, and you just see their faces. Some people have gotten around that by painting, like, glowing eyes, so they still look like spirits. But uh, if they're just humans and armor, then whatever. Yeah, it's it's very strange. It, they took away kind of the, a lot of the magic. I coffee out of the way, so I don't dip anything in there. Okay. So we almost have some hot water. So yeah, I didn't like that. And so I, and I don't like his face being so recognizable as human. I mean, it, they did a nice job of sculpting fabric, you know, over a nose and mouth and chin. So you actually can see that. But at the same time, I like this Jawa kind of blackness of his. Uh... All right. So here's the challenge. So everything else looks good except that staff. So as you can see, we want to deal with that. Should I? Oh, maybe this is a little white. More white. Okay, so you can see. See, we need this to be more like this, and we want everything to be kind of straight. So this is what we're going for, and this is what we've got. So how do we deal with this? Well, we're going to try. Oh, sorry. Loosen him up with some hot water. So just having a little electric kettle. Oh, it's going to steam up the uh, camera, maybe. So, apologies. So there's hot water, and here's cold water. All right. And you can also use like a hot air gun or a, a uh, you know air dryer, hair dryer, um, with that that gets pretty hot. It isn't one of those ion ones or anything. Okay, so we're gonna put him in here, get him to soften up. Now sometimes what happens is uh, just heating them up actually. We'll oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll bring them back. It happened. Oh, nice. We'll bring them back to... Okay, so now I'm just going to put them in cold water because that's exactly kind of what I wanted him to be. Okay, so what happens in the molding process, and I'm by no means an expert on this, but what I've heard and as you have witnessed... <laughs> okay, and as you have witnessed, 
is uh, when the models are removed from the mold and not given enough time to cool, uh, they probably need like a certain number of, of minutes once they, the plastic has been injected. If they're not allowed to cool or the temperature of the room, there's too big a discrepancy between the temperature of the room, so if they're casting them in winter or whatever, and the temperature of the plastic, when they take them out, they get warping. And uh, that's when you get the wavy spears and the things, you know, kind of laying against the spear heads, laying against the, the characters holding them and stuff. But if you heat them up sufficiently, as you can see, they go back. The, the memory, the material has the memory of, of where it was. And it was just the, uh, the temperature itself that caused kind of uneven drying, like, you know, cold air would hit it on one side. And just like when you, you know, paint one side of a piece of paper, it curls or you print heavily in an inkjet printer and the paper comes out and it just, it curls up. You get uneven uh, temperature kind of displacement. And so the one side of the material is cooling and it just starts to, it's, it cools very strangely and unevenly because it's introduced to a, a too, too strong a temperature, not evenly dissipating the uh, the heat so when you reintroduce the heat the the material has a memory of how it was originally kind of bonding together so look at that so this thing was like you know touching the back of his head and everything and you put it in the heat and zap it goes right back to how it came out of the mold wow which is very great because when i was trying to bend that back to straight it didn't look anything like straight so just applying a, a proper amount of heat for enough time gives you that that uh, original position of the plastic and then you need to get it into hot water again because you could reproduce those same kind of conditions if you just let the the water on it cool see how there's like droplets of water on there and things it would cool again unevenly and you would just have it warped in a different way so you you know cool it down you, you quench it you know basically just put the whole um, soft part back in there and look at that you get a nice nice uh, original pose of that plastic and that's even better than probably if i would have done it by hand uh, better than i would have originally or better than i would have adjusted it to so just dry him off a little bit wow that's it that worked better than i even thought so i should uh, maybe do a, a close-up you know video of only that to show people uh you know that you can get decent results but he snapped back in. That gives me a lot of um, confidence in this material as well. This is great. This is nice plastic that they use because it's got a good good memory. And I got a nice straight staff just from zapping it once into the water. So where oh, this is his card. So happy quick results. And as you can see, now it's it's nice and rigid in that new pose. So Adeodatos is on a 50 mil base, a commander champion. So 50 with a lip. So it's not the biggest base, so it's probably this guy. Yeah, I believe that's what we're dealing with. Because that's a 30 or 40. And I'm not sure who that's for. So who's the other fellow? So he's on a 40. So he's on a 50, yeah, so I'm I'm guessing that's a 40. So so Fenton Brahms is gonna be on a 40 with a lip. And the breechlings are on 50s as well. Yes, so Oh, yeah. So the other, that's right, I haven't opened the other breechling yet, so the other breechling has his base still inside. So, Adeados, Adeados is on his, oh man. Oh, I should, oh, I should just do a flying base. I should just put a, uh, a piece of acrylic through there and just float him up because I don't you know there's not like specific line of sight you just are using the base size for reference but that would be so much nicer to have I mean I've got what do I have I have bum, bum, bum. 
Whew. I've got three mil acrylic pipe. Five mil would probably be safer. So uh, Tamiya makes, um, don't look at the price. Uh, Tamiya makes uh, uh, acrylic, or, you know, clear plastic uh, pipe. And this is three mil, which may not be thick enough to be rigid. Oh, actually, it feels pretty good. And especially at a shorter, at a short height, it may be pretty good. I don't know. Do I do that? <laughs> I really want to do that. OK, so I think I'm going to hold off. I'm going to make that decision later. I'm going to hold off on gluing him, because I think I might want to just float him, because he doesn't have anything. Because that would be great for painting, too, is just float him off that base a little bit. Let's see in the other artwork. Yeah, they do. Look at this. Yeah, they show him floating. So I might do that. I might just put him up on a uh, put him up on a little stand, just like a centimeter high float. That would make that would make me so much happier about that figure. Okay, so that may be another video. So there is our champion who is not glued to his base because he will be floating. So uh, yeah, so I have the I use the five millimeter to for my bloat drones, my Nurgle bloat drones to do flight stands for them and to put them up, you know, much higher, what is that, about six inches or like about, you know, like 20 centimeters, put them up um, high so they look more dramatic and it was more fun to photograph them against flyers and uh, other flying units because it got, got them way off the battlefield. Uh, I can show you that someday when I go back to finishing them. Okay, so he will not be finished at this point and we do have one more champion who we may need to, yeah, we may need to, no, I think he's okay. Okay, well, why don't we do these guys? It's nice that you can recognizably tell the um, bases apart. Okay, here's the breechling, and I've got two of these, so I'll have to open the box with the other guy in it. Oh, yeah, so here. Oh, here he is. Yes, so this is how he comes in this little individual unit box, and there's his card, and his the f miniature. Oh, is it under? Oh, it's under here. The miniature and the base. So I may as well do these guys at the same time. Oh, and tokens. That's great. Wow, we got a lot of these big tokens too. So this is going to be such a harassing army. I can feel it already. Oh yeah, so as you can see, these guys, so this is Fenton's base, get that out of the way. And these big 50s are what the breechling goes on. Like so. Oh, there's the card. I'll just stick that in here for now so I don't get it damaged. Well, maybe not. Okay, so here's the breechlings. Very the thing looking like John Carpenter's thing, those flowery mouths. Oh, yeah, they're great. And again, it's a little bit, you can see that there's a seam here. And then there's a, uh, and I seam a mold line here that just needs taken down a little bit. But there's an assembly seam here and here as well that I'm probably gonna need to patch. I've got some liquid green stuff that probably will make that go much easier because I can just kind of squeeze it in there. Although, and here too, you can see there's an uh, assembly seam. Um, the liquid green stuff though, you sometimes you put it in, it's like, oh, that's perfect. And then when it dries, it contracts. So it, you can still, it, it's a fainter line, but you can still see it. So you have to sometimes hit it a couple of times. So yeah, I think that's, there's not much we can do about that. So we'll just base these guys. Yeah, I really like the um, the lit bases. I think the first ones that I had, the first miniatures I had, were the um, uh, the gates of oh the Rick Priestley game for Warlord games, uh, Antares, the gates of Antares, and they had a a little subtle, pretty flat bases, not the 
kind of conical ones that don't have a, much of a lip on it, but they have a, you know, my, my, not a yeah, they don't come out, flare out at the bottom, but they had a little lip at the top, and I was able to really do some nice terrain effects, some, you know, kind of sci-fi with, with you know, sand and glue kind of give this interesting surface, kind of a volcanic rock surface to the, uh, to the base, and because it had that lip on it, it kind of held everything in, and that looks, yeah, it looks really nice. So I might try to get away with doing something like that with these guys which I might also be able to simulate yeah just kind of fill in the edges here that might be nice might be okay so reach things yeah yeah because there's a lot there there's a lot of room these guys aren't very flat so they're not making much contact with the uh, oh making no contact with the base wow okay Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. Okay, so our two breechlings. And I guess we'll do Fenton now. I don't think he needs, I don't think he needs straightening because his, his uh, magic staff is supposed to have a, a crazy line to it. It doesn't look like it's warped. You know, if you look at the uh, the artwork itself, it's it's bent and kind of being consumed by fire. So it just looks like a natural branch. Look, ah, but here, his sword. So he's got a saber on his back that's wrapping around. So, mm, I don't know if the water's still hot enough, but we'll give it a shot. No, I don't think it's hot enough. It's not softening at all. No. Okay, you're going to have to give me a second here. While I dump this. Oh, you're right back. Okay. So the slightly cooled, the slightly cooled water didn't have any effect on the plastic stuff. So we're gonna need another glass of straight from the kettle. So it needs to be quite hot to make have any effect on this plastic because that literally did nothing. See, this is what we're dealing with here. This sword kind of hugging his uh, side there. So let's try to heat that up and straighten that out. And hopefully we'll get the same good results we got with Adiadados. That was very encouraging. Okay. So here is straight from the kettle. Hot water. And we'll just give him a quick plunge until things start to move, which they do right away. That's great. And as you can see, wait, let me cool it down. As you can see, just heating that plastic straightens it right out because it knows, you know, it has a memory of what it was supposed to be doing and uh, just didn't cool down correctly. So if you heat it back up, with some very hot water, you can have it snap right back to uh, the position. Right, let me do it a little bit more here. Make sure it's as straight as possible. Yeah, wow, it really straightens out. It's I mean that really that really works well, and um, I've had good results before, but it may be this material giving me a particularly nice. Yeah, it gives me a particularly nice straight line again. That's really nice. Wow. Happy to see. Okay. Let's get him on his 40 mil base. Yeah. 
yeah, I definitely want to play around with some some interesting effect underneath them as far as something magical or something that just kind of fits the demonic feel of the army. So this is our boy here. Fenton. So he was a, a king's uh, empire soldier that was left for dead and then converted maybe through the, the magic and uh, influence of the Burning Man, uh, became a priest in the Burning Man cult. So yeah, a lot of great background story, as as they always do. We are just so great with doing fun background stuff. All right, and the last thing, the last, well, second to last, the last uh, multi-part. So these guys are considerable. So there's three squads. I've got nine that go on the smaller bases again. And there's three of them. So we've got nine of the Doom Seekers on their nine little bases. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So just like the uh, Warped, we're going to have three more units. Maybe I'll make some room here. See you later, Warped. Um, we will uh, make some room for all of these guys so I can keep them on camera. Okay, so these are Doom Seekers. So it looks like more specifically magic users are casters and priests. So they're a squad, three uh, fire team, three each, three squads. I may target within eight inches of one of your fire teams. Place a unit in base contact. So they have carved knives and arcane blast. The knights have a two inch range, strength two, and gains a shaken token if you kill a model. Arcane blast, uh, six versus defense, strength three, area effect, and its trigger is a mask that said blood spill in his name. Discard, discard the top three of your fate deck. For every mask you discard, move the target three inches in any direction. Wow, so these guys have some mobility based on a, uh, a mask trigger. That's great. An open portal summoning a breachling in base contact with the fire team. The created breachling can move up to its up to its speed. Wow! So you cast it and it moves right away. So we're summoning breachlings. That's great. So these guys can get can be summoned and then move if you if this uh, mask trigger. Wonderful. Okay. So here's the nine. Nine guys we're putting together. And these guys might also need some straightening. I should actually look at the ones that will need that first. And okay, so here like this. All right, let's see if we're still hot enough to do this. It feels pretty warm. Mm, a little, no, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, not enough. Okay. So that needs to be straightened. And this is the thing, if you can't get it hot enough, you know, kind of get in the in the position that you sort of want it when it's uh soft and then get it in the cold water to kind of freeze it there. It's a little it's pretty good. Pretty close. <sighs> to yeah, it's a much straighter version. And I have a, a caster. I think one of these guys is actually miss, missing a uh, a hand that they're casting. So let me just take a look. Oh, and another spear. Let's see if we can get that to straighten out. The water's pretty hot. It's burning my fingers. So it's still pretty hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's straightening out. So we just want this away a little bit. And I can actually, maybe with glue on the base. Okay, so we want it like that. Boom. 
Okay, yeah, that's much better. And she looks good, no problem. Oh, another one of the same guys. See how the staff is just laying against his body, so try to heat that up. Ow. Hot. Okay. Yeah. It's doing it pretty well. It's not as hot as it needs to be, but it's it's going back to a much straighter position. Yeah, as hot as possible is the best. I mean, if it would burn your mouth, that's exactly what you should be applying to the miniatures. But th this works, you know, equally as well. You just need to do a little manual posing to make sure it freezes in the correct position. And yet another one. Oh boy. I don't need it too many of these guys. They're weird spears. So the cooler the water is, probably the longer you have to leave it in there, but you know, it just keeps cooling and cooling, so. All right, uh, yeah, we're not uh, getting any results here from this. Ow. <laughs> okay, so this is a lot of me posing it, but yeah, it's still getting much straighter than it was. Okay. And my cold water isn't as cold anymore either, so it may not be sticking things where they need to be. All right, please no more of those guys. All right. Oh yeah, so here's my caster missing her hand, so let's find her hand. This guy's good. Here is her hand. So there's only one of her? Wow. Okay, he's got a little bit of a scythe problem here. Let's see if we can get that to straighten out. And definitely keep a hold of you know one part of the miniature. Don't uh, submerge it completely, especially if it hits the bottom of the mm -hmm. glass, because then it'll just you know conform to the shape of the uh, the glass. Oh, that worked. That did it. Yeah, that helped a lot. Yeah, that's great. Boom. So the position of that now is away from him and much straighter. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I think that's everything with the exception of our handless, our handless young lady. Okay, so, and she is a one of a kind sculpt. So, sorry, here's what we're doing. The Doom Seekers. And there are nine of them with a few duplicates, especially the guy with the staff. There's a lot of duplicates of him. Where is he? With the book and the staff? Ah, they changed. And maybe they changed his sculpt, or am I? Oh, this, I'm sorry. That was my raving madman. Ah, OK. The guy that was duplicated three times is the Raving Madman. So there's one fire team of him as well. So that's who I was fixing. So there are no duplicates in the Doom Seekers. That's pretty cool. But there are three identical Raving Madmen. Hmm. All right, so. Let's look at the box to try to help us figure out. So she's casting from this hand, and the fireball is over this hand. So we need to kind of do this with her. Oh, it's from a wand, too. OK, I'll try to hold this into place and not get glue all over my fingers. OK.
All right, there we go. <laughs> this is hard to hold because there's not much of that body to hold on to. Jeez. Okay. Okay, there we are. It should kind of line up better than that. Wow, I was much happier with my dry fit. And this also may be a uh, warped. Okay, so there is where I want it to be. <laughs> Sorry about that if you're hearing that on the mic. Okay. Yeah, looks like it needs a... Probably the reason it broke is because it's only attached at the wrist. I might want to glue it to some other part of the body, maybe the back here. Put some glue here so that it's not going to put so much pressure on that wrist. That's a crazy design. Yeah, because it is supposed to be cascading around the body like that. Yeah, picking up this model is going to be insane. Because the only th choice you have is basically to uh, pick it up from this arm. That looks great, but geez, that's crazy. So maybe there is a good point for gluing. Yeah, where that coat flares out because otherwise this is just crazy. Yeah, because then it can at least rest there. So it's not circling the body so dramatically, but it's got another point of contact because only that wrist and it's spiraling, spiraling around is, that's crazy. So now, once that's dry, I can pick it up pretty much anywhere because it's hooked together. It's fastened at two points. Actually, while we're doing this, let's just put it on a base because I don't want to lay this down. Oof. All right, so <sighs> a little too much on the base. Okay, well, I guess I can hold it right here now. Not really. Jeez. This is a delicate pose. My gosh. Wow. Okay, well, we'll see how that holds. Wow, okay. And let's just get the rest of these guys down. So it looks like this fire needs to sit against the base. I'll try to glue it flat. Jeez, come on. Uh, yeah, the difficulty, I like this glue a lot, but the bottle has yeah, some control issues. So I just need to push this down to make sure that it's actually going to make contact. The, uh, yeah, the bottle, it's, it's a little bit hard to control how much is coming out. It's not one of those kind of needle syringe type uh, glue bottles so it's it's hard to uh, to find where the glue goes or how to get it there 
All right. Uh, and I'm trying to stay on camera. I really am. Yeah, lots of ethereal flames to paint. This should be fun. Fun stuff. Okay, so if we push that guy down. Ugh. More tiny feet. Wow. Yeah, but it's nice. The Doomseekers are all unique sculpts. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, her sword is not great, but... There we go. Oh, I love this guy. Look at that. Boom. Base filling contact. That's great. Uh, tiny feet again. Everyone should just have flowing robes that are making huge contact. Yeah. Pretty good, though. There's enough. I just need to wait a little longer. Uh, yeah, and I think... Um, this plus, I they were included a uh, one more unit from an allied faction so that this commander pledge gives you just enough to play. I think it gives you just enough points. So I didn't order anything else, even though the uh, pledge manager for this Kickstarter was open for a long time. So there's a lot of opportunity to keep adding things, but yeah, I just got distracted. And since I hadn't played the game yet, I didn't want to go crazy. You know, ordering every available miniature because they will be available once the game is released. Oh, okay. Well, this has to be cleaned up before. That's the probably the wor is that. Wait a minute. I don't want to take a look at that sculpt. I don't want to. No, it's not supposed to be sticking out like that. That is a piece of flash. Don't want to be cutting a horn off of his head. Yeah, that's the worst I've seen on any of the models, but that's still not bad. Yeah, so I think I'm definitely going to have to get some fine grit paper or some emery board, and you know, because with the knife I'm roughing it, and everything else is so smooth in its finish that uh, I might not like that different texture. So I need to smooth that out with some or fine grit paper or a, a nice emery board to get it nice and uh, smooth to match the, the finish of the rest of the uh, the model. Yeah, these guys are pretty big. They fill the these little bases pretty well. And boom, nine different sculpts. That's wonderful. Look at that. Right. Okay. And so we need three more. Three more bases for our mad men. Ah, uh, the staffs still aren't perfect. I think my cold water was cold enough. They look like they're cooling in a strange way. So they may need to get re-dipped. So let's take a look here. So that's it. Huh. So I guess they're not going to put lips. If they're going to do the smaller bases, they're not doing lips on the bases. And where is his card? That's why I screwed up, I think, because I didn't have his card out. So the unit card for the warped. Okay. Oh, raving madmen. Oh, that's an ability. 
Oh, these are adjunct models. Okay. So when this unit's adjunct model is removed due to damage, it counts as removing two models. Ooh. Okay. So these guys are an adjunct. That's right. So it's a. I haven't read about the rule yet, but on the tabletop, they can prevent opponents from using the shaken tokens that the cult intends to use for its own purposes. So these may be guys that I can. They're adjunct models, so I may be able to put them in into bases of other units because they don't have a character card themselves they just have an adjunct card so that may be what that is all right so so our doom seekers uh some of these miniatures are barely on their bases uh yeah that's not too bad Okay, wow. So that makes some really interesting, you know, the poses are so dynamic. It makes some very interesting fire teams. Okay, so here are all of the Doom Seekers. Okay, and the last thing we'll do is put these warped little guys. Oh no, they're on their feet. And I guess a feet and a staff will give me enough to Put them on but still oof, crazy so raving madmen the base being able to uh, put the base of that spear staff thing on the base itself helps alright yeah that kind of gives you a little more ability to straighten it Okay, that's water, thank goodness, that was not, oof, and of course, I think Gorish is going to have to wait, because I think he's going to need pinned, there's not enough of a flat surface, as you can see, all these scales and everything, there's not enough of a flat surface to really connect this much plastic to this base, so I think I'm just going to have to drill in do like three pins and pin him here so that he and the base are joined eternally but as you can see i think i was yeah showing this before he's got a lot of cleanup to do as far as uh, patching the seams from assembly he was in many 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 pieces but it's a gorgeous miniature i'm mean, barely a miniature a maxature it's huge huge piece of plastic and quite heavy and fills the heck out of that 120 base But, uh, yeah, beautiful model. Okay, so that's everything. Oh, actually, I had to pull her out, the Envoy. So I guess this is a character that can float between. So we've got another, yeah, this is a 40 like Fenton Brahms. And I haven't even seen this out of the bag yet. But this is Bing Nguyen, so kind of an Oni type caster oh she doesn't have oh is she floating too shoot yeah i might put her on a, a floating base as well so she's an envoy spirit lantern fire teams in this unit in this unit may take action printed on friendly court of two fire teams within eight inches oh wow so that's great so ghostly, when a quarter of two fire team in this company suffers damage, you may discard a crow to reduce it to zero. Wow. Deafening shriek for every enemy non quarter of two fire team within five. You must take a willpower versus 14 duel or suffer a strength four hit. Wow. All right. So here's my envoy. 
And she looks like... Mm, she could be floating as well. That might be a nice effect as well. So maybe I will not base her because that's a nice... That would be nice to drill into right there. And then just seat that right through there. So give her a little bit of uh, air off of the base. But it'll be nice and secure then because I can anchor it through the, the bottom of the base. Okay, so two of our floating characters are not going to be... Oh, are not going to be based. So my commander and my envoy will stay unbased until I can cut the uh, stands for them. But that'll be great. That will look very ethereal and interesting. So that's it. That is the commander. That's the... Uh, Commander Force that was uh, part of the original Kickstarter. That's everything on a base. And now that everything's on a base, I will do some, I'll do a turnaround video, just kind of put everything uh, on the turntable and give it a few uh, few rotations so you can see what everything looks like. I think it's worth it. Um, they're real fun. Uh, you know, they're really fun to look at the, the detail. So I'll, I'll shoot it, I'll shoot it tight and give you as much detail as possible because they're uh, beautiful models. Really, really nice job. They did the theming and everything is great. And uh, we're going to be really fun. Very complicated, very challenging, but very fun to paint. I can't wait to see what all of this looks like with a, uh, with its colors on it. Look at my little adjuncts. Um, but uh, yeah, so a very interesting system. Uh, I haven't seen anything like this before, you know, aside from like, you know, movement trays from fantasy. But, uh, you know, where you see bases and larger bases and I guess Mantic oh they, they encourage you that's right you don't remove models in, in uh, Mantic games so you would uh, you could actually do scenic bases and, and adhere everybody and just track their their damage by uh, with dice but yeah everybody looks good and very very little cleanup but a lot of patching so that's going to be an issue I think as I going through and, and filling all the assembly so yeah it's it's almost six of one half a dozen of the other whether you want to spend the time assembling the models and get exactly what you want or buy them pre-assembled and then have to fill in the mistakes at, at the factory it's hard to know which you know which is a better way to go but this way i think they're lowering the you know the entry the uh I'm not thinking of the expression, the uh, the the challenge for entry, the uh, the difficulty of entry into the game because they're pre-assembled. You put them on bases and you're ready to go, even though they're a little tricky. Like, for example, this <laughs> was pretty tricky to get assembled and put on a base. But um, uh, so still, you know, more for the specialist, more for the hobbyist, not as much for just someone that, you know, wants to go beyond a board game. But beautiful models. I'm really I'm happy with this force, and I can't wait to see uh, see what this looks like against Abyssinia. And I hope uh, Nick is very inspired and, and painting away as we speak, so that we can get these guys uh, facing off against each other and get you some some battle reports, and or actually just maybe a review of the game, like what we think about the game. So, well, I guess that's all the damage I'm going to do today. So, thank you, thank you for joining me, and. Uh, this will be on the YouTube channel as well as well as in the uh, Stitch archive. St Stitch Twitcher Twitch. <laughs> I guess I'm tired. The Twitch archive. I was thinking of the Stitcher podcast uh, app. Uh, this will be in the Twitch archive as well. And uh, so please uh, have a look again at these all getting on their bases and me in my uh, own way. I guess the thing that will be the best thing to watch, which I might pull out as a highlight just by itself, is how well that staff straightened out when we put hot water on it. So, um, yeah, so remember that. I mean, and it has to be hot, like extremely hot water. You get this plastic, you get you get plastic to uh, heat up. And I think very much this material is really good, had really good memory. So as soon as you got things heated up to where they were, they went right back to the original position that they were in the mold. And, uh, yeah, that's a great, great thing to have happen. All right. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, our YouTube channel has a, a huge range of uh, role-playing, miniature, board game, all kinds of great unboxings and reviews and things. 
to enjoy. So thanks again and see you next time. Goodbye.